due order. Um, all right, let's call this meeting to order. Um, welcome everyone. We have no members of the public, so we'll do a little reorganizing of our agenda. Um, one of the things that's happening today is uh, Leslie Oberholzer will join us at five. So depending on whether or not Margaret is able to join us in a couple of minutes, I would like to bring up the liaison updates up ahead of the recode update. Um, but we'll see if she is joining us because she has a little update to give on attending the energy committee. Does anyone else have any other agenda? Do -si do adding, subtracting, moving ideas. Margaret is here. Okay. Hello, Margaret. Glad to have you with us. Um, I was just um, letting folks know that because Leslie is joining us um, at five o'clock, what I'd like to do is bring the liaison updates and your little update um, up ahead of the recode update. So, you know, we can hopefully finish all of that by five, the things that we're not needing Leslie for. So let's just go into the administrative items. Um, the minutes of the September 11th meeting were distributed or a link was distributed. Any changes on those or are we ready to prove as written? Thank you, Robin. So, all in favor, just flap a hand or something. There we go. Thank you. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to mention, you know, I've had some thoughts. This is one of those odd months where we have our meeting on the 16th because of the holiday last Monday. And um, therefore, we have our third Tuesday workshop meeting the following day, which is annoying. But I, without, I didn't want to cancel it um, unilaterally. Um, and there are some things that if people are able to come, we could talk about. Um, we certainly can talk about things that we discussed with um, Leslie today. But on the other hand, we could. <laughs> One of the things that is coming up is, and we will see in the... Um, uh, the recode update that there's been a lot of feedback of a lot of types. <laughs> um, and we might want to, we might be able to make decisions on some of those today, but we might want to have the informality of, of our workshop for that. So, and, and one item I've been thinking about is even though a lot of the use table relates to things beyond the Topsom Center recode. There are some interesting questions coming up mm -hmm. around the use table that we ought to dig into. And so if people, it's on my calendar, I am willing to come. I'd like to have it be in the conference room if we can. Um, is anybody able and willing to join me, especially if things come out of the, the um, updates today? Um, and if you can't, there's no problem, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's on my calendar to attend. I yeah. just want to make sure it's got some while. substance. Yeah. Um, what I'm waiting for is some answers from Leslie from the developed the boulevard. Yeah. And if we don't get those answers tonight, or we don't get to it. I just, I would question the, the need for me, but right. more than likely we won't need it. I'm just saying, I want to make sure that there is something yeah. that we need to talk about. I mean, we could actually wait until the end of the meeting. Yeah. 
to make that decision. That so I'll just like put that. it out to folks that it's on the schedule right now and let's make that okay. I'm sorry, the yep. date for that is that's tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. It's October 17th, four to five. Mm -hmm. And it will be up in the conference room because we don't have any more interns and hopefully it's not booked. No. Um, okay, good. All right. So I think everybody had on their calendar the uh, Saturday, October 28th open house, which because there's a lot more feedback in this process than we, I had anticipated. Um, we're not ready for an open house, but we talked about how could that time at the library be used. And, you know, we've had a stakeholder, a couple of stakeholder meetings that have been very useful. We've had the select board workshop and the planning board workshop. We haven't had a specific sort of workshop and outreach for property owners. I would be particularly interested to know if, if it's a Saturday, are you able to come, Angela? Because you are one of those <laughs> property <laughs> owners. Yeah, I yeah, that, that would be great. It's, you know, it's not something that we probably are going to have Leslie for. Um, we're getting signals that budget issues are mm -hmm. edging into the red. I'm going to have a chat tomorrow, um, you know, to learn a little more about that. Um, and we don't know, you know, this, the Leslie did this postcard um, in a way, and I'll pass it over to so Angela can see it. You will probably get it in today's mail. Is my, mm -hmm. my yeah. okay. um, we've asked people to RSVP so we can have a sense of how many people are coming. And if there's a really big turnout, um, you know, but Leslie's booked, isn't she? she yes, when she we talked to her the other day, yeah. she said yeah. she. Yeah. So we're going to be on our own, which will be interesting. And I think the most, the most important thing about it will be for us to be challenged about how can we respond to people's questions and take really careful um, notes about what those concerns are. Um, so as many of us can show up as possible will be great. Um, Leslie had recommended having kind of an open house type style to it so people could come and go and ask mm -hmm. questions and, and have one-on-one. -on -one right, so it's not a presentation that, you know, there could be sort of a welcome, but that she's willing to send us some files to have printed at, we're well, here. Yeah. We have a printer that can handle large scale things and we could put up some displays around the walls. So um, we could, you know, people will have something interesting to look at. If there's not <clears throat> going to be a present and an actual presentation, then what's displayed is be going to become the presentation. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we, I think, need to um, we need to do some work up front mm -hmm. of knowing what it is that we're going to be yeah. Um, yeah. telling and, people. About. And because we had that discussion after the planning board workshop the other day, mm -hmm. right? Um, at, no, it was after the office hours two at which the planning board chair attended. Um, we sat with Leslie for a few minutes after that meeting. And Leslie, so that it's in Leslie's mind that we would need some visual help. Um, and so I, I'm hoping today we can have a little bit of that back and forth. And I think she would be glad to have us have, she's got a, a slide presentation um, that she's done for both the select board and the planning board. And um, so that could actually be running as a loop, maybe, you know, just to sort of have, let people at whatever point they come in. Um, and then, you know, she, her sense is that that format is the most effective in terms of the kinds of questions people will want to have one-on-one -on -one with staff, with the committee members. Um, We're still going to be putting up uh, the, the poster size drawings and uh, feedback from the uh, update. 
the MD. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we okay, have good. several of those big things. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah. So people can be reminded mm -hmm. of what right. we wanted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So then, um, Margaret, are you prepared to do sort of let people know how the update? Um, the liaison conversation went with the energy committee. Sure. You can hear me, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So I met with the energy committee on the 26th of September. Um, we went over uh, the implementation matrix, specifically the items that are listed under energy committee in that tab that's grouped by organization. Um, and we went through all of those strategies and they are basically like they've done something on each one of those. So they're like pretty ahead of the game in terms of, um, those, those items from that matrix. Uh, we also talked about the, um, the recode update. I gave them just a general idea of where we are and that there would be, um, upcoming public feedback sessions, but at the time I didn't, I didn't have a date. Um, and they were, I think they had expected for me to actually bring the new draft code to them <laughs> during that meeting. <laughs> and I was, I, I said that I um, don't have the expertise to actually go through and explain that. Um, and also it's in, it's being revised. Um, so I was, I'm supposed to come back to them at some point with a date uh, for when they can look at the, the draft. Um, and I actually found on their, they sent me their work plan. And on one of the items on their work plan is to re review the draft code with an eye towards energy efficiency. So I don't know like how that would even work, like how we would, um, I don't know if we would just take their feedback as sort of like a member of the public as well, or if there's some sort of other, you know, um, intercommittee uh, communication that needs to happen. That's great. Thank you for that, Margaret. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so just to clarify, because I sometimes get fuzzy on these things, is the draft code, draft one, is that available on the website, the town website? So it, oh, it is? is. Yeah, yeah. So, and the little, uh, there's the video, the 12 plus minute video right. that's available, you know? And I mean, that's something that, you know, that committee could put that on their agenda and, you know, they would probably know how to look for the specific things that they're concerned about and they could give us feedback, you know, they could give us feedback by an email to, I mean, all of our emails are available, I think. Um, they could certainly, they know where to find me and Julie. So that would be, that would be very helpful to hear from them. Um, so where on the, is it in the, I did direct them to that video. Yeah. Um, it's but on where the, is the draft code page. It's not on the CPIC page. There's a page for recode. There's a separate recode page, figuring that there would be enough separate stuff there that you can find. It's under CPIC. Um, it takes a little poking around, but <laughs> you'll find it. They'll find it. Rick, did you have a question or a comment? Yeah, just a question on the, the content of what's in draft one. Is it all the articles or is there still missing articles particularly? Well, it's all the it's top eight, some eight, center eight. related ones. So it's, well, it's article think, two and then six and six, eight, six, and seven, and eight. Because I'm exactly. guessing the energy is going to be most pertinent to the cold cleanup piece mm -hmm. that are. Yeah. Doing. Yeah. So that is or is not in that draft that's on the website. Right, right. That is none of that's it's not. available. No, that's not not available at the at the moment. Right. So that's a good piece of clarification. Um and because of their interest, which is wonderful, um, I would be glad or you could go ahead, Margaret, and just let them know, you know, like send them the link 
to Topsom Center Recode and let them know that the planning board is working through the update cleanup chapters um, with staff, with planning staff. And you're not quite done, but you're close to done, right? We're getting, getting there. <laughs> um, with um, a few miles left to go. <laughs> a few miles left to go. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Um, but and you could let them know that probably a lot of what they're interested in will be in those update cleanup chapters. Okay. Great. Okay. So we are at that weird moment. We're going to be hang waiting around for Leslie um, and. There's one more thing that I think you might help with, Margaret. I think um, you had sent the frequently asked questions. We did what we could. We sent it to Leslie. And I think Leslie forwarded it to Kirk because there are some questions around um, grandfathering in and non-conformities that, um, that's gonna be, a, you know, some of the concerns that come up. Um, so I'm, I think it hasn't come back with the feedback from both of them. Mm -hmm. And I, my sense is right now is not the time to push for that, even though it would be useful. Um, it, at the point when the, the draft of all of the cleanup update chapters are becoming public um, and we are entering a fully public process with some dates. I think frequently asked questions will be really important. Mm -hmm. um, but until like right now, there's stuff for people to look at. You know, we're, we're taking comment in a lot of different ways and there will be a revised draft. So my sense is wait on that a little bit and then push. Okay. We won't we won't have an FAQ in time for the um, public session on the 28th. We probably will not. Okay. Although, although um, we'll see what, you know, I'm gonna have a conversation tomorrow that we'll talk about sort of our process and where we are and um, how constrained things are. So um, if if there's a way to have something, that, and, and that can be a document that can be a living document. You know, we can add questions to that. I mean, I think Julie has a document, a spreadsheet mm -hmm. <laughs> that um, is logging topics, questions and responses. Yeah. Um, so as questions can be, and this started when we had the first stakeholders meeting and then another stakeholders meeting and people were encouraged who couldn't give all of their feedback because it wasn't ready at that time. They were encouraged to send an email mm -hmm. with feedback to Julie. And so you've gotten a couple yeah, just a couple. Just a couple. More may come in time. So now I could send a little up, uh, just an email to Leslie that we can log to. The other liaison updates. Oh, are there others? Well, I thought Larry and I go with that one. Oh, good. <laughs> 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 Wow. <laughs> Didn't you have, always have a TDI one that you wanted? Yeah. And was sure. Absolutely. Okay. Any, but yeah, and I'm yeah. sort of going on old automatic pilot of people I'm not doing any. Well, I'll take a couple minutes. Sure, um, please. Our next board meeting at TDI is Wednesday morning. Okay. And you got some literature today and an email from Mark or yep. previously from me to Susan, yeah. Susan to you. That T.Y. Lynn's quarter study is old. I call it old. It's been around many years. It was actually posted on the website for quite a while. Yeah. The study was, um, 
I thought it was a very good study. It was it was important at the time. We didn't know where Thompson Fair and Mall was going to end up. I mean, we had a lot of vacant property near the end. We certainly didn't know that our market capacity was going to be more than 500 trips per peak hour. But again, that wouldn't have been permitted by DOT or the community had it not been able to handle it. I mean, it's not it's not something that's going to tear us apart. It's just Thompson Fair Mall Road is is not attractive. There's a lot of things that could be done to it. And when that TYLN study came out, everybody got excited because it looked pretty. And then we put a dollar amount on it. It was nine million dollars at that time to do mm. those improvements. Mm. The town just didn't have those yeah. kind of dollars, and they didn't think they could raise them from the commercial residents along the corridor. So we've got to find a solution um, in the near, relatively near future. How are we going to handle the Thompson Fair Mall? Whether it does anything more or, or is built out to the vision that you that uh, Leslie has with you know buildings all through the vacant parking lots and, and underground parking or parking garages or something like that. We've got to come up with with um, a solution. So the first thing TDI thought is, what do we have for existing conditions and it turns out we didn't have a lot and so that's why we hired for i think it was thirty five thousand maybe twenty five thousand yeah twenty five thousand dollars um the company and found the Owen Haskell who is a, a very reputable surveying company not the Durant ones here but they had done the work for market baskets so we had a lot of data already uh -huh. and they had done a lot of work on the intersection so we hired them to do the whole Thompson Fair Mall Road, find out where the property lines are exactly, where the, where the infrastructure is. And then when we have that base map, should we decide to make improvements or we'll go to the next step, which would be do another um, design of, of how the road might be improved, or if we at least have accurate data and not conceptual data. Um, so, Margaret, are you, can you hear him okay? Great, thank you. The owl is so, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, matter of fact, when Leslie was talking the other day in our in our um, <laughs> workshop, yeah, it was loud. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was really loud. Yeah, it was. Um, so I wanted not to talk loud. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there. We just don't know where it's going to go. It's going to be a next stage. So when we get this information, then we're going to obviously present it to the community. Um, it will be CPAC and the staff and the city and, and the members of TDI and where do we go from there we don't know yet but we know that we need the the as builds which is what we call them to to make any next any uh productive use right the other thing that TDI is struggling with a little bit is what is our purpose and should we be lending money to potential businesses set up a, a a type of a revolving loan fund like Brunswick has with a certain entity. Should that be something TDI does? We don't think so, but um, we don't know for sure. So we're going through our bylaws. Matter of fact, today there was a, I saw an email, I haven't digested it yet from Derek to TDI with his thoughts. Um, so we're going to discuss those two at a plan state. But that's just a short update. Any questions, anytime, reach out to me right now. Should you have any? Andy, how is how is TDI funded by the by the town? Yeah, okay, yeah. And it's not a it's not a guaranteed amount. Okay. It's not a set amount per year. We um, it's no secret we've got about three hundred fifty thousand dollars in our watch out. Good. And and one of the things, um, for example, I'll give you a great example. There was a um, the public works was going to do an improvement on a sewer. And a certain road, and they didn't have the time to, to go through the town and procedure to pay to take the opportunity to save about twenty thousand dollars. So we fronted the money with TDI for the town, hired the contractor, and did it and saved the town twenty thousand. The town reimbursed us what we paid. Still, the overall savings was twenty thousand. So we can act quickly. We can write a check tomorrow if we have to. We don't have that. Um, um, I know. Um, um, government structure, where uh, yeah. you know, we have we have some liberties, and that's kind of what TDI is supposed to be able to do. And there's something we can do with what we're there. Yeah. And historically, development has been community development too, and TDI's ability to work quickly has helped with 
arcs and other mm -hmm. needs in the community too. Um, it's been a great resource well, for sure. getting stuff done. For example, there was a property the town really wanted and they wanted to buy it and they had a two week window. Mm -hmm. The way they're gonna get authority to the select board that way. Mm -hmm. And they could come to TDI and they could look at it and say, hey, this is something that's gonna be beneficial for the community. Mm -hmm. Let's buy it and, and we'll go we'll get you reimbursed. Sounds like you're an economic SWAT team. Right. <laughs> and, and it was, away. it yeah. sounds wonderful. And yeah. it, it just raises the question for me of how how do those good decisions, how do those helpful moments that TDI steps in, how do those um, get kind of reported to the town? Because TDI is a separate entity. Um, I'm just curious, would that get reported in the town manager's report? I think if it was or... a big, if it was, and I almost think that road, the, the sewer line thing was reported, but we report to the, yeah. the select board sure. too. Yeah, yeah. Our minutes are all that's public. Right. Yeah, 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 that's right. Online. That's right. Just like our online. Derek, Derek actually is in our meeting yeah. for three months. So yeah, that's was great. A little, Different since John Chad, but it was usually just John and us. And then with John, uh, we would have hired an economic development director. Yeah. Um, so Derek's kind of linked yeah. with us. That's why you see Mark with this committee and Mark with another committee. But just mm -hmm. Derek's been yeah. pretty true to TDI and it's been a good a good guidance because we did have that conflict with John Span being the chair of TDI and the chair of the planning board. And, and that was kind of right. So we, we eliminated that issue and Kurt became chair. Right. Good. I'll right. say we don't have our struggles. We don't have an agenda for this. So yeah. Everybody's <laughs> busy. Everybody's busy. That's right. Has TDI had any discussions ever about impact fees for the Boston Terminal Road? Yeah, we have. We have. Um, I'd have to go back and check them in the minutes. Um, that's something that I dealt with a lot with in Bangor, mm -hmm. and it was very mm -hmm. successful. Mm -hmm. and, and again, when a developer knows there's something coming up, they can plan for it. Mm -hmm. It's when they don't know and they get hit during the planning process mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. creates bad feelings and extra work. Yeah, yeah and I think yeah, the yeah. role of TDI in that has been to sort of be a facilitator between developer users and, and proposed impact fees by the town and they facilitate discussions. So it's a really helpful role, but TDI doesn't, you know, yeah. recommend them or things like that yeah. usually. Spoken as a former member of TDI <laughs> <laughs> board. Well, that's that. Great, thank you very much. Um, there may be some questions that will come your way um, in another capacity as we go forward with the we code oh, update. I, but... I can imagine. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sure Larry, you want to? Sure. Andy said, and Julie can correct me if I'm wrong. But my recollection is uh, with DOT and Market Basket, DOT was requiring various improvements Offsite, uh, off site mm -hmm. as far as in order to get a permit Correct. for market basket. And we were on the entrance of I 295 South, the intersection here. Right. Yep. And that was three million, I think. I think it was all the improvements or something like three million dollars. Yeah, the company that EDI is hired. Yeah, I did. Okay. Improvement. So if that helps there. Oh, yeah. EDI is oh, yeah. No, that's why we chose. Yeah. Save money. Yeah. I can I can give a planning board update. Uh if, if we have time to, to but not on the workshop because we're we're talking about the workshop we'd like to just sort of keep that well you could you can do it because she's not here yet and then if we need to revisit some of those items we will. That would be great. Okay, great. <laughs> Thank so I, I did attend the September 14th and 28th uh planning board meetings and workshops. And the uh, agenda for the workshops, the, the important points, the proposed amendments to the consolidated sign table that doubled the maximum commercial signage allowed <clears throat> allowed for 200 to 400 square feet for businesses with 60,000 square feet or more. This is for market basket, yeah. but not, <laughs> but yeah. also other uh, types of big box stores like right. that. Based on the square footage. 
doubling the size doubling the square yeah. footage, which was kind of we went back and forth, but that's what was agreed upon. Um, Can I jump in? On, that's not sure. approved yet. That's going. No, this, this is proposed. public hearing. Yeah. Public hearing yeah. tomorrow. Night. tomorrow. Oh, okay. okay, this is proposed. Yeah. yeah. Then we did uh, proposed amendments to the methods of reserving land in the open space B and Lou that takes multifamily development into consideration and uses a flat per bedroom fee of $650, which can be applied to both single family and multifamily subdivisions at the time of the building permit application. And the $650 fee will be adjusted annually based upon the Consumer Price Index New England for the preceding 12 months. Under the current fee, it's per, <clears throat> per number of units. Single family divisions aren't assessed enough and multifamilies are assessed too much. So that's one of the objectives. Okay. And then of course, the code cleanup of subdivision ordinances. In tomorrow's planning board workshop, uh, we'll include a discussion, uh, well, it's on the agenda, for oh, a that's now off the agenda. But yeah, it actually got pulled. Because right. It's pulled off the agenda. <laughs> it was pulled off the agenda? Yeah. yeah. Tomorrow night is only public hearing. Oh, I didn't know on, that. On the two amendments you just discussed. Only public agenda. It just happened. Okay. Yeah. So you're letting us know about the public hearing on those two different items. The adjust the fee, per bedroom <clears throat> fee, and the sign size. Good. Good right. to know. Yep. Right. Yeah. And, is that it? Yep. Great. Thank you, Pete. Points, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and that will be tomorrow, not your usual Thursday, separate night right. tomorrow. And that date is the 17th. Right. 6.30? 6.30. Okay. 17th. Right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In order to comply with various requirements for notes. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Great. Oh, it's Leslie. There's Leslie. Boy, you guys are giving me a lot to type today. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I hope it, Susan, if I didn't get it all. Don't I'll, you worry. Just I will help you out. You're doing the big bucks wrong. Uh, yeah, help you out. <laughs> oh, and there she is. Hello, Leslie. Thank you Hi. for joining us. Um, I don't know if you even have our agenda in front of you, but what we're what we have right now. Um, and we're so glad to have you with us, is we're looking at the recode update in terms of um, all of the feedback that's been given to us, which is, you know, we've had two rounds of office hours, lots of input. We've had a select board workshop. And thank God you were there on September 6th. Now, I'm prepared to do a little reporting on that. Um, there was the um, Mid Coast Council of Governments sponsored talk by Randall Arndt on the 21st of September that a lot of folks attended. There's not much to say about that. I, I've heard that it was, a, it was interesting and some very positive things said about Topsom's development. <laughs> Then we had the planning board workshop um, a little more recently on the 3rd of October. And yeah, and tomorrow morning, there is gonna be a staff review committee that will have a chance to comment on that first draft that everybody else is commenting on. And so we, we don't know what they'll have to say about that, but we've been alerted that it might take more than one session, maybe two or three sessions for the staff review team uh, to weigh in on that. Who's on the uh, staff review team? That is Dennis Cox and the fire and um, police and Tom Lister. Water and sewer. Water, sewer. Town assessor. Town assessor. Yeah, just oh, our um, peer review engineer, Tom Oh, okay. So, and this kind of came up because the planning board chair suggested that there were some people who are often part of the, you know, 
project review process who haven't been brought invited to the table. So we're inviting everybody to the table as soon as we learn that they need to be. <laughs> so my sense, um, Leslie, is that we might have the opportunity and the need to even make a few decisions today. There's been some, some feedback um, you know, for example, going back to if we start off with the select board, that might be an interesting thing. Um, I will take responsibility for the update there. Uh, there were a few of us present. Um, and <laughs> there were some very interesting observations and suggestions. It's it's uh, have you you've watched this? It was recorded. Yes. which is pretty unusual. Usually select board workshops are not recorded. Planning board workshops are not recorded, but this one was, which is great. So we can all watch it and hear specifically what was said. One of the things, and I just looked at this today, was I was reminded that um, one member of the select board suggested that instead of so expensive sidewalks, that we use crushed stone. I'll just let that sit there. Push the baby stroller. Well, <laughs> well there's, there's pushing a wheelchair, pushing yeah. a baby stroller wheelchair, or even uh, plowing. No, 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 no <laughs> snow clearance. So I just sort of thought I don't know if we even need to address that further. Um, but there was there were a couple of comments that were made uh, repeatedly that because the planning process, I mean, the update process um, went forward and it looks like the plan looks like it looks because we had been notified, the town had been notified of the plans that um, Crooker Construction has to move. So the, pl the 2019 plan looks like it does because of that notification, that, that plan. We were told by members of the select board, this has been on the table for such a long time, it's never gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. And so one of the select board members said, "I we would suggest that you take the Crooker site out of the town Topsom Center recode process. There was quite a lot of concern about um, if Crooker sells to another company, that uh, the the new code would tie the hands of a new owner. Um, it wasn't really put out there until after that the Crooker construction is not in compliance right now with current code. So, I just, I put those things out because that was in some ways, that was the nature of the workshop. Um, Can I the, say that I feel uh, like we would not be doing our job if we changed a plan that was approved by the people of Topsom because right. one person wants us to? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not at all comfortable mm -hmm. with right. that. Right. So just to clarify, was it just one member of this like board? There were two members who stated that opinion that yeah. they felt very confident that um Crooker's not gonna move. Um and you know they had they voiced those concerns about what happens with this with this new code and with they you know how they would not be in favor of the new code because they don't think Crooker's moving. And just moving and and there was you know the clarity around this was a, a comprehensive plan that had probably more robust citizen involvement in it than any previous plan um that didn't seem to hold a lot of water with a couple of people but i i think you know we we, we can have the discussion here um, and weigh in because I think it is our role to be the champions of the plan. Um, and not everything has been changed by um, the pandemic. Okay, this is and something that, that came up um, in the 
office hours by stakeholders. And it came up again in the planning board and it came up um, in the select board is sort of why don't, why aren't we not doing something across the highway? Um, what are we calling that? The Southwest, Southwest Quadrant. Quadrant. And I didn't know that there was a whole um, master plan development potential code. I guess was it a draft code? No, it's it's, um, in it's, it's a code. It's approved. It's approved. It's I spent many years of my life on that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and apparently, it's a very different master plan development approach mm -hmm. than we're taking here. And um, people want us to reopen that and. My response, and I think the committee is united, but we have moment here to have some weigh in, is not not at this point. We made the decision very clearly that we're that this is the growth area in terms of where infrastructure already exists. We we're we don't want, and the town doesn't seem to want us to extend the investment to more infrastructure um, at this point. So so our boundaries. Are clear. They've already been drawn in, and they're that you know anything else can happen as a future round. Um, yeah, I think those were the only things that I actually wrote down with stars. Leave out the Crooker site. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's my update on the select board, and um, yeah. I hear see that hand. Go for it, Leslie. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, I don't want to, I'm trying to like read my own away. That's planning board. If you're looking for a date, it's uh, September 6th. Yeah, I'm just trying to, I felt like we had the discussion about TFM 1 and 2 in that meeting as well, even though okay. planning board brought that yeah. up as well. It keeps coming up. Yep. <laughs> And I think, I mean, it was very interesting in the planning board workshop that um, there were three members, I think, of the planning board present, yeah. including Larry um, and, uh, you know, the chair of the, of the planning board. I think he has customarily been looking at the Thompson Fair Mall as one entity. Most of us have. Um, but, you know, the observations that Leslie shared with us made us think about it differently. And so there are two zones and another member of the planning board um, disagreed with the idea that it's it's all one. He, he sort of said, I see the value in having Tops and Fairmall too. Um, yeah, it's kind of two to one, that thing. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Were you in agreement that Tops and Fairmall too has a value? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Got yeah. That. yeah. There. Because of the buffer with Malware Drive. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Well, Susan, would you say that we've gone beyond that? I think everybody's okay with D1 and D2 now. I, even even Don sh shared the other day. I think yeah. it's a pretty done deal. Done like, deal. I think it just Great. needs some so, education and yep. they need to come yep. up with some discussion. Yep. I and, think, and I think and everybody's give people time. And included. I think everybody's. Board. Yeah, sometimes it takes a little time yeah. to sort yeah. of take that in. Yeah. So yeah, I think that is a done deal. Okay, so Leslie, do you want to say anything about any of those other items that did come up at the select board? Um, I, I don't know if any of them need so much discussion as for us to maybe reaffirm that the boundaries and the zones that exist in the draft are ones that we feel good about. Um, yeah. I would note that they did want us to look at non-conforming uses and what- The um, select board? Yes, right? yes. What are some of the uses that exist now that would be made non-conforming in the code? And so I have been- Was well, that kind of into expansion to- <clears throat> The non conforming, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that was yeah, the worry. That's... That was the worry was that we, we would implement this in a non conforming, might want to expand a little bit, but they could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one uh, of the I things so... along, along those same lines, and this may be a question for Kurt as well, is that 
Yeah, if a new owner takes over and it tends to continue the same operation as the existing, is that considered right. a grandfathered case? It would be grandfathered. Yeah. So that as long as that's clear in the mm -hmm. revised code. Right. And that set level of sensitivity is being recognized in the code. Yeah. First, also mentioned, you know, we discussed um, some of these uses that might be made non conforming instead, just saying, well, this was a legal use as of, you know, when, when the code became effective and it will continue to be a, a legal permitted use into the future. Into the future. Yeah. It typically it goes with the land. You know, right. in my mind, that becomes a frequently asked question for yeah. the current list. It was like, okay, what does the code say about, you know, when does a non conforming use, what triggers the right. change to make it conforming when? And I see Margaret taking notes. <laughs> right. That's helpful. Thank you. Um, what's next? I can tell you there's a lot of law on non-conforming use, expansion of non-conforming use. There's a lot of law on that. <laughs> Susan, did you and that may be a law? Did you jump over office hours when you went to court or are you well, it for later? later? No, I, I did jump over it okay. because okay. I felt like select board, the update on the select board was okay. one that I needed to sort of do. And if there's anything that needs to be Address from that, we yeah. could do that with Leslie's help. Okay, I just but, to make sure that I didn't mess something and tell us. Yeah, later. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, there were. I mean, I think the the things that have been the feedback that's been particularly valuable has come from the two sessions of office hours. Um, we've gotten into enough detail, and I think the first round of office hours you all discussed at the September CPIC meeting and then made some decisions and recommendations on with Leslie's help mm -hmm. at the uh, at our workshop. That um, was a set of notes. Of yeah, yeah, those yeah. two pages of yeah. notes and, just, and recommendations. Are those ones that we need to actually make any further discussion decisions on, or are we aligned? No, I, right, I'm with you, Leslie. Yeah. We've discussed them, they're done. <laughs> well, they're done in a sense. And they're they're gonna be implemented. They will in, be done. Well, there's yeah. a lot of things that Leslie's gonna provide when she has time. Right. Um, so I mean, a, a lot of them decisions aren't made until you get the information. Right, things like the Boulevard Street. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you know and, that's forthcoming, so that's great. Yeah. And I'm not saying there's any hurry, yeah, because I know you've got a lot to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I just know it's forthcoming and when it comes we'll look at We were waiting for this second developers meeting and, and I would like to talk to you about whether or not we need to wait until this the uh property owners meeting as well, but, but we can talk about schedule later. Yes. Do you want to? Shall we jump into talking about round the property, the office hours too? And uh, because that was a, um, it was attended by kind of the same folks who came back with um, additional questions, um, and. That that time, I don't I don't think we had a lot. We haven't sort of had notes that were distributed about those. Um, so I just started typing some up today. Yeah, and I've been off my game a little bit with that. So do you want to lead that discussion, Leslie? Would that be um, in terms of I think we we the, the good thing was people seem to be satisfied with the MPD for the most part. Um, did we did we do a whole lot more on the the master plan development or not? I don't think we did. No. We didn't do anything. No. I just asked. I just asked questions that pertain to making sure I was going to get that information at a later date. Right. That was the only thing we talked about in the MPDs. 
But if I can just jump in for a second to help maybe Leslie, yeah. there was a lot of questions about particular things in the document. And I think when Jim would ask a question, Leslie would answer it. I, I just don't think that Jim knew what it meant. But once Leslie explained it, then Jim was more comfortable with it. And I understand we can do that now. Yeah. But the, the after concern is just to make sure they're clear enough that when Leslie's gone, uh, of this new staff in here, are they going to interpret yeah. it the same way? That's mm -hmm. that's a little bit of the concern. We got to make sure that it's clear enough for everybody. And it might be after Leslie just gave the the uh, explanation, it might be clear enough. I don't know, but I'm just saying that's a little bit of a concern. Right. Yeah. So, so I will say that most of um, what I find really helpful is Jim is very specific about his comments. Um, and they're they're always good comments and always helpful comments, and we can respond specifically to them. Um, and I think uh, during the office hours, most of his comments were about uses, um, which is unfortunate because Kirk wasn't there. Um, but we, I did take a few notes, although I don't think I took as good notes as I took in the previous one because then we kind of got off. I, th I feel like we got off track. But he did um, bring up sort of the definition of artisan manufacturing as one question. We did talk further, I think, a little bit about drive-throughs. Um, we did talk about electric vehicles um, and uh, those charging stations and all of that. And those are all part of Kirk's work. Um, and I will talk to him uh, about those, but I really look forward to Julie's notes. Um, about those because I was sort of frantically trying to like read it and understand it as he was asking the question and responding, which was a little bit harder for me to do. Um, so I, all of those sort of use things, I think were the use related questions were all pretty straightforward. Um, and I do think that there were some, some clarifications that need to be made within the code about those. Um, at the end of uh, Jim's sort of comments though, he did uh, bring up something that I couldn't find any reference to in the code, except for the courtyard. Um, and I feel like he maybe saw that and didn't read it in great detail and understood, didn't understand that it was part of courtyard, which I think it's pretty clear in the code. I just don't think that he spent I think he sort of skimmed it and saw it and somebody else mentioned something. And so he made the comment and I don't think he was ready. I don't think he was really prepared. He even said himself that he wasn't necessarily prepared to make those comments. So I'm not going to worry about those until he does his work. Um, I think he said he was going to look at some other items um, and test them out and let us know. Um, Kurt, Kurt, Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when he first stood up and talked, um, or, or was brought up his comments, he, it seemed like he was mostly comfortable with the building types. Yeah. Um, and I, that was very, that was very nice to hear. Um, I feel like he gave us, gave us some good feedback there. Um, he did, however, then as Dan began to speak, seem to, um, agree with Dan on several items. And I am I did not take good notes on Dan um, because I sort of felt like it, it was sort of devolving away from the plan and I was getting a little bit freaked out, I guess. Um, I think that Dan's concerns, we talked a lot about how Topson Fair Mall one would develop and this sort of shifting away from kind of uh, a, a very suburban model to something that's kind of in between a suburban, you know, it's more like we can call it the town model, I guess. Um, and the idea that we're creating, pushing the buildings up so that they can be both auto oriented and pedestrian oriented, not, you know, as pedestrian oriented as Main Street, but to have kind of the best of both worlds, the best that we can. Um, and I don't think that I don't think that we convinced him one millimeter. <laughs> and so I'm I need direction 
on that. And I think it's a little bit like the Crooker discussion with the select board. It's a sort of, we have the situation, it's working well for what it is right now. We don't think it's going to change. So we don't need a code for it. And I tried to, you know, this is what I do for a living. I write codes and I write codes for lots of built out places. That's mostly where I work is in existing communities where infill and redevelopment is going to happen, not greenfield development. And I have seen places that people thought were never going to change, change completely. Um, and the idea of the code and the idea of having the non-conforming language in the code is so that whatever exists can continue. And if something does happen, we've got code in place to guide it and implement the vision of the community. In other words, the community is not all of a sudden struggling to convince that their vision needs to be incorporated. So I'm, I feel like this was the conversation that we had about Crooker with the select board. And this is the same conversation we were having about Thompson Fair Mall. And if Thompson Fair Mall never changes, it can continue if this code is adopted the way that it is. Um, but if there is change, the code will help guide that change to meet the code, meet the plan. I just comment one one comment to, to that. I, I think you nailed it, except for one. And I'll give this example: Dan Sherman Sherman Paint Store and Kumi and whatever. It's an existing building. He knows if it was a vacant lot, I think he could live with the new code. Yeah. But he's saying if I want to add a second or third story and make it a multi-use building um, with apartments above or maybe office space or something. I can't do that under this code because I won't be up next to the road. So I think his concern was, how do I get over that? When Because I can't pick the building up and move it. Um, so how can I add a second or third floor to that, to that existing building? Is that an option that we can have? I think that's where Dan's biggest concern was. That was a generic concern, which is, the, the opportunity to build a second and third story for housing to really make it multi-use, but he does have a focus on Sherwin Williams paint and sort of where people are schlepping that paint to and from. <laughs> but he also yeah. said, and we'll let you talk in a second, Leslie, he also said that he had had some conversations with one of the consultants that helped to guide the comprehensive plan and how he didn't understand my language, not his. He didn't understand what she was talking about, like how would that ever come about? And he has come around full circle and under, understands what she was talking about. And, <clears throat> and they have sort of really created a meeting of the minds there. So I have a funny feeling that this might be another example of with maybe a little more complexity than Topson Fair Mall one and two, where people are sort of getting used to um, what this new code will mean for existing structures, you know, um, and, and having the opportunity to talk about this particular building or that particular site and what's possible there. I mean, your experience, Leslie, is going to be so important because when you say, I do most of my work in areas that are already built out. And the, the plan is to guide when something brand new happens or there's infill development, that will be guided. Um, but I think it will be helpful to be able to have that conversation around some very specific sites. So, and so in a sense, it got off track because it got away from the specific code and into some aspirational development without looking at the specific code as like, what about this section? Um, so I'm sorry that that caused you some agita. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I guess, I guess one, I don't think that if he was building a new building on that site that he would be happy with the code. I did not get that impression. Um, I think that sounds great if that is true. 
um, I just, I, I, I think based on his conversation about schlepping the paint, um, it was, it was definitely that this is the way, you know, parking in the front of the building is, is a requirement. Um, and that creating some other frontage was not, um, was not valuable. And, um, so I feel like I just, you know, I just want direction. Um, if we, I think the question is, do you want to allow parking in the front of the buildings? Um, the second thing that I just want to say is the idea of adding additional stories on top of a single story building. Um, I can say in my, you know, traveling and <laughs> looking at so many communities, it doesn't happen very often. Mm. And it certainly does not happen very often with current single story strip center construction. It might happen in with older buildings that were structurally more solid than yeah. what is currently built today, where they add on additional stories, but it doesn't happen very often. He must have been looking already at the possibility of doing that. Sounds like he might have been. I would be very surprised if the construction of that building didn't involve some significant demolition of the building that's there right now and mm -hmm. rebuilding foundations. <laughs> I think you're right. I think I think Dan is looking at like the Goodwill building and thinking I, if I could add a two or three more stories there or this building. I don't think Dan's cognizant of the cost to beef up the structure. And Joe, you yeah. know a lot about this. That would take to support a second or third story. So I think that's that's just something he's concerned about, and he's throwing that out there. I'm not saying it's. And I, I'm not saying I. I might probably even agree more with you than him that it's. It's not feasible in 99 percent of the cases. So We're, then the question. Is, is to, to follow right on those lines, those part of the answer in that scenario is that part of the non-conforming to gratify the use is similar to other areas where if the if structure exists to be built up to the footprint and uh, the lines of what's there, is that allowed? And that, you know, may be a Tom Lister question as well as that, you know, are you? Yeah. Yeah. You could add well, another story. Or, I mean, we could write the non-conforming language that you could add. I mean, I think right now, um, I I may be wrong about this, Julie, but I believe it was going to be a 50% addition wouldn't trigger anything, but we could make it higher or something like that. But usually when you're investing that much money, you really, that becomes your trigger to make it meet the vision. Right. Um, I think that was the language that Kirk just added. I didn't bring it with me. It's Maybe usually 50%. Like footprint and 100% if you want off or something. I know footprint is something. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. we can write any of, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, the truth of this committee is we're the comp plan implementation committee. So we're going to get all kinds of feedback and we need to carefully look at the code we're writing and make sure that it is implementing the comp plan. <laughs> so if questions come up and it makes us question, wait, is this doing, you know, will this result in what the community said they want us to do, then we should do that. If the question, you know, the code that we've written is, you know, con contra to that, then we shouldn't do it. My reading on the comp plan is when new development happens in Thompson Fair Mall, we want to try to make it <laughs> more walkable and all of these things. And that's what the comp plan says. It's not us saying right. it. Our job is implementing the comp plan and assessing the new code that we're writing to make sure that we're doing that. And these questions, you know, to me, we're truthing that against the comp plan, not against what Dan or Jack or Joe or Susie says, <laughs> or what any of us say, it's that is our job and that's our only job. So that's, for me, that's all I'm gonna look at. And, so, and there are times when there's complexity because yeah. one of the things that Leslie said as we were talking about the parking, you know, if we I mean, just, for instance, adding two stories onto Sherman Williams paint, how does that affect parking, blah, blah, blah. And I think you mentioned, Leslie, well, the Topsom Fair Mall Road could have parking along it, right? And 
And I think that was part of what's envisioned there as a possibility. Um, the, the other thing though, is that that gets into the whole thing about this Topsom Fair Mall transportation master plan and the sort of the town coming up against, this is was an update earlier in today's meeting, Leslie, that um, Andy reminded us of when that plan came up and there was sort of an estimated cost on what if this gets implemented, this Topsom Fair Mall master plan for the, for the road. And it was about a $9 million Dollar nine million dollar price tag back then it would be far more than that now, and and the other big thing is that um, Market Basket is going to bring in much more traffic than um, than anticipated with a different kind of structure there, and so there's the there's concern about. Um, limiting the size of the road in terms of if there are accidents and emergency vehicles getting in there. So, you know, it's you, you have to sort of look at multiple moving parts as well as the vision and the comp plan in terms of safety. And um, the, the comp plan is clear that it, that people want a more walkable, cyclable, safe, community and it feels to me like things elsewhere are moving in that direction so and can i push back just a little bit yeah. I, and i want to angela too and, and this is um this is concern of a lot of developers that probably weren't part of the comprehensive plan committee or, or the input to the comprehensive plan they're scared that the vision that's going to come out of this comprehensive plan is going to be something that they can't do and nobody can do. You look at the sketch in the comprehensive plan of Crooker, you look at the sketch of the comprehensive plan of Thompson Fair Mall, infilled with all buildings, no parking lots, I mean, for the most part. Um, they, in their, their mind, that's undoable. It can't happen. We can't, we can't build it and we can't sell it and therefore it'll never happen. There is that concern out there. And is there any, in, in their question is they're hoping that there can be some movement. And that's this is where this push is coming from Jim and, yeah. and Dan. Can we push a little bit to, to not have it be strictly coming from the comprehensive plan? Maybe we can, and maybe like you say, Angela, it's not our job, but what if it's not the But also, I think you're focusing on just the, um, to sample drawing, but it's really the language in the plan and the intent of the plan and the people of top. So not just the drawing is clearly a sample, right. but the language and the intent of what we want those I'm, different I'm areas on, to look like. Yeah, Mixed no. Up. I'm on board. I'm just yeah. trying to paraphrase what right. some well, people I saying. We don't want to come up with something that, that people can't implement, right? Yeah, that that's isn't right. serving anyone. Well. And, that, and that's the concern. If we can get through that and explain that. And, and here's another perfect case. Jim looks at this and says, I can't do it. He talks to the so less. He says, yeah, you can do it. Mm -hmm. This is how you right. do it. So it's, it's a it's a <laughs> it's a process. It's a process. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think we'll get there. I'm just. And every time we identify a concern, a fear, and then get down to the specifics in the code, a very useful shift happens, both in the understanding of the code and if there's a need for revision, that becomes apparent. Right. But so far, it's mostly maybe a misinterpretation. And the the I think part of the question for us is how long do we keep open? the targeted knowledgeable feedback on draft one and before we move on and what do we give leslie for direction she's got yes. a couple questions yes. she's saying I, I can go either way you you need you us uh, need to give her a, a, a final direction and let's hear what rick so has to, so say. to say leslie just speak to give you a direct answer to your question i i can speak for the committee but i want to say i i don't think you should 
consider changing language about parking the front versus parking the rear for a parcel specific question. Um, yeah, I think the you know the fundamental approach you had to the the layout the parking question is leave that in there and vet it during the question and comment period at this point rather than making a wholesale change that's going to apply to the whole conceptual change to them. Yeah. yeah. So I think I we got that, nods all around the table here. Yeah. 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 Great. Now one of the um the very initial feedback we got that you know at one of our meetings, I guess it was the July 18th, there was quite a lot of feedback based on parking in the front, et cetera, and some other things. And I recall that, you know, there were people who were invited to participate in the update process who chose not to. And and that's fair, but, um, you know, it, it's hard to put that forward now. And it's not to say we wouldn't take any of those comments seriously. Of course we do. But it has to be focused on where in the code do we need to make a shift? We need to, we need, the, the draft is what it is. And we're having a lot of specific helpful comment. And so I just, in terms of the guidance that you need, Leslie, on parking in the front, <laughs> I think, no, <laughs> stick to what you've got. And I think if there's some substantial worry um, about is the build out with this new code possible? People need to, with those concerns, people need to get down in the weeds and look at those sections that look like they're an impediment and bring them to us. You know, we, we can schedule individual sessions as people are ready to actually dig in and give that feedback. So before we move on to the bigger question of when do we close <laughs> comment, you know, do we keep it open through the end of October so that we get the real concerns of the property owners and abutters? My guess is yes. <laughs> um, but are there other specific areas where you need guidance because this is a good moment to do it. We've, we've had a, a lot of questions and comments. I, I don't think I have any specifics. There's There was something that I just lost just when you asked me and I'll... Um, You'll find it. Yeah, I'll find it. Um, Try to get those meeting notes done tomorrow if I can. As soon as I have them done, I, I'll forward them along. And then office hours. One other thing, and I don't know, um, I don't know where uh, the CPIC's role is in this particular thing, but with the planning board particular, there's a, there's a, there are questions that have been coming up from the beginning in terms of if, like part of the purpose of this new code is to provide additional clarity, predictability for developers. That's been clear. Same. But as that process moves forward, and we went through a trial period on 99 Main across the road, and the planning board seemed to sort of say, yes, this will create a more streamlined approval process. The boundary line of where staff um, approval works and where it has to be done with the planning board is a question that I don't think CPIC has a lot of say in or expertise in. Our goal, I mean, we want to be able to um, have a code that is easy to use, um, clear, um, that will eliminate a lot of the, there's a huge demand on discretionary decision making right now. We want less of that, right? More clarity, um, well, which at, will help. At, time, at times yeah. you do not want less of that. 
So uh, just you know, your parking lot question about yep. trying to back whatever that, depending on what else happens with the rest of the of the RICO that's you know in other chapters, right? The clean up and update that there may be various places where you know uh, somebody comes in and says, okay, this is not allowed under what you are just doing, but planning board, this is not in feasible or possible and therefore get a an exception uh, an exception type idea to it and my sense is that that's um an acknowledgement that's being made by by leslie and kirk and and staff both you and tom are very much involved in that kind of acknowledging the need for right. those yeah. kinds of exceptions to be built yeah. in there are places where the where staff should just be able to say boom 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 yeah go forth and do not sin uh <laughs> and other places where they say no you need to come to the planning board right. and right work out these areas right so leslie you were kind of nodding <laughs> that was the big thing that was the big thing that i opened my big mouth and um freaked out don right that was don i couldn't tell yeah. Yeah, because I didn't get to see him in the last meeting because I couldn't see. Remember? Um, yeah, so, right. so I, was, I yeah. wasn't sure. Um, but yeah, that that's actually you know that's a big it's a big question for me. And now that Kirk is back, um, I need to sort of get back with him and see if they had any discussion. If you know he's you know no, we're absolutely not going to do that or. If there is a way, I will just tell you that what I tried to reiterate in the meeting was that this code is written as prescriptively as possible with the goal, whether or not that's the case, but with the goal of it being able to be staff approved. Um, it's meant to be written with metrics and shawls without any discretionary or very limited discretionary language within it. That part, it's written that way very specifically, but there's also a series of waivers that are also built in. And the version that you have, um, Kirk hadn't really figured it out and I have actually modified the draft to incorporate the waivers more clearly, um, which is the process. The idea was if you follow the code, black and white, A, B, C, D, you get approved by administratively. But if you want to request a waiver, you want to request a specific, um, a specific relief from a specific regulation, you can go to planning board and ask for that. Um, and the idea behind all of that is one, to make it easier for development to happen. Two, to make it nicer for the developers. So they're like, oh yeah, well, sure. We'll do all of these other design standards because now you've made it easier for me to get approved. Um, and three, for there to be a higher level of predictability for the results from the code. The idea that we're building you know, the code around the vision and then the development should match the vision because it's not being interpreted. The, the code isn't being interpreted, you know, five different ways. Um, that's the goal behind it. Yes. We, um, the planning board hadn't really talked about that yet um, at any of their workshops. So that's something that we will have to discuss in the future. And obviously it means changes to the site plan ordinance. So, we haven't gotten into, there's gonna be, I think quite a few changes to the site plan ordinance that come about, um, you know, as a result of these changes. So just keeping a list of those and, and we will be tackling all that at some point in the future. But I we think that was- workshops. Yeah. In our future. Yeah. Yeah. A few more. Plenty of workshops. <laughs> <laughs> So that is an open issue, but it's very helpful to hear the intention and the specific area where if there's a waiver, the waiver language in the code 
will be written in a way that when it goes to the planning board, it's about that, period. It doesn't open up more cans of worms. It opens up the issue that's directly related to the waiver. I could, there was a little bit of sort of back and forth, interesting banter um, in terms of, we'd be very happy to have you do it that way. And we don't know about that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Um, but that I think this is a process that is getting clarified about who's going to be handling what, in what way. But we don't have, as you said, it's a good reminder for us, we don't have that waiver language. Kirk needs to work things out there and more workshops happening in the future. Thank you, Larry Brand and Pete Bono. We'll be reporting back to CPIC on these things. And Lizzie will be talking with Kirk. And we'll all be talking with each other. So unless there's something specific, we, we've had updates on various things Unless I don't think you need any more guidance from us right now, Leslie, is, is that correct? Just the timing. When do you want well, the revisions? Should I wait? I think we should. Well, my sense is we should wait for the property owner's session because it's a very specific date. It's only not 12 minutes. Yeah. It's 12 minutes. yeah, it's only 12 days away. And, you know, although you won't be there to be part of getting it, um, we will do our very best to record those specific concerns. And we. what might be good is to see when we can get together with you after that um, to relay those to you. Um, and, you know, that's something that, um, so that's on the, that's Saturday the 28th. And our CPIC meeting is going to be on the 13th. If possible, I don't know if we could actually have a a, a Leslie Kirk, <clears throat> Susan, Rick, Julie <laughs> Zoom to discuss that next week. But that's that's a possibility. If there's any open time, a nice hour of time during that week of November six. Um, a lot of us will be busy on the 7th voting, but um, other than that, does, does your calendar offer anything there, Leslie? Um, yes. Um, Kirk is going to be the hard one. Okay. <laughs> okay. And we could email comments yep. ahead of time. So when the ga you gather, it's about, okay, what do we want to do with that? Yeah. 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 So it will be our job, Julie and mine, to gather those notes together um, and relay all of those <laughs> concerns. So we'll, we'll take it from here we'll, and we'll, we'll see when the time opens up with Kirk. So the other, the last thing on my, do you have a Well, I, yeah. I, should, we, I think should not forget that it was pretty obvious Jim wanted to come back yeah. to, and yeah. it would be, yeah. if, because he has been helpful and specific, yeah. we ought to make sure before Leslie rolls everything mm -hmm. in that we give him another, another chance. But <clears throat> we also, as you pointed out so, earlier, need to, uh, need to cut it off at some point. Yeah. So the real question is, does Jim have time between now and something during that week of, you know, Monday, the yeah, November 6th, really, between now and November 6th, does he have an hour, hour and a half for, for us and time to really look into the code to relay our concern, his concerns? I'm glad to reach out to him because he, he made that clear that he... You know, he's got a lot on his plate, but this is something that's a priority. Um, it would be great if he reached out soon and that gives yeah. him time yeah. just to think about it. Yeah, I'll reach out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my, just switching to our conclusion here, we're gonna be meeting on the 28th. We described um, meeting for, this is gonna be an open house format as per Leslie's suggestion, we think it's a good one. When we have our two hour session at the library, 
And you sort of suggested, Leslie, it will work better for people coming and asking questions rather than to have a presentation. Although it, it might be good to have your PowerPoint sort of on a loop, sort of um, available to people if they want to sort of look at that, even though it's, I mean, they have a video right now, but to have that PowerPoint available and, you know, somebody if, could stand with them and go over it and pause it and have a conversation about it, but not to have an audience, to have more of a people popping in to see what's there. You suggested that you could send us some documents for printing that would be really, I think, wonderful illustrations for people to begin to see how this is intended to play out. Now, the good news, I'm so naive, I don't know what our printing capacity is, and we have a printer that will print these big things. So that's a nice thing. So between now and, you know, it's, it's only 12 days, but if you have a sense of like, okay, this is property owners and abutters, it will be open to others, but it's focused on Topsom Center Recode. And if you have a sense of what would be helpful there, that would be enormously helpful to us to just get those ideas and start printing. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I'll I'll aim um Julie for the end of like the 23rd and that way that's Monday. Great. You'll have you'll have a couple of days, a few days in there to print. Um and I'll just coordinate with you how many. Um I'll probably yeah, uh, we'll figure it out. Okay. Leslie, do you have um before and after images of of places where you've implemented a code and uh, and so people can see the net effect of the, of the change. Is that that's something you have in your files? I do, but I don't have anything. I only have the ones that I showed you in Dublin that people didn't respond, didn't seem to respond very well to. Um, you know, it's going to, I think that the most important uh, images would be those from like Yarbrough with that that are in the plan, or you know that were some of those images that we showed in the uh, code as examples. Um, I think that's the most helpful. Okay. Um, everything that I have, I mean, you know, every place is so different. It's gonna it's gonna freak people out to see some of those examples of you know more we urban. Don't, we don't I, I was going to say, I, I, as yeah. about adding yeah. new information, I'd be more tempted to rely on images from the comp plan development yes. to, okay, now how has it been yeah. implemented in Recode? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. How will the new code guide what we've got going on right. into the future to give the town what it's asking for? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for making time for us, Leslie. Yeah, um, absolutely. We're, Thank we're you. Inching forward, and uh, we'll get you notes about that last office hours. Sounds good. And we'll see you see if we can schedule time with Jim. So. Okay. 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 Thanks Thank a you. lot. Thank you. Have a good Bye. night. Bye. And with that, I think our agenda has been met. Yes. Yes, more than. Um, yeah. What are we going to do tomorrow? Or would you like less? Yeah. For an hour. Yeah. Hmm. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying yes or no. I'm just no, asking no, the I question. <laughs> I, yeah, my sense is let's not hold a meeting. I can't come tomorrow, so that's good yeah. for me, but it should influence everybody. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of stuff in the works, but right. I, yeah. I think we're not going to cut off the feedback no. until, you know, after the, and we've, we've, we're going to have some gathering to do at that point. Right. Um, and this, and because the planning board and the update cleanup chapters have a few miles to go, mm -hmm. um, you know, those two things will come together at a certain point. Mm -hmm. um, not in an open house, but they'll come together in, you know, 
focused discussions for us to have workshops maybe in um, November. Um, I will see how things are going. But. I'm going to say you're going to be able to get our notes done and to, to yeah, last the Yeah, exactly. Use that here. time. That's all the same. Yeah. Right. yeah. I'm give you an hour to do that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I won't even call you. So, no workshop tomorrow. Hear that, Margaret? Off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Has it first. <laughs> yeah. Any final comments? <laughs> I'm so I'm very relieved that um, Leslie feels comfortable letting us know what that last office hours felt like mm -hmm. um, to her because it, you know it's there were some very interesting comments made about um, sort of developer visions, but when it's not grounded in the code, it it's not helpful. And sometimes I'm better than others at raining things in mm -hmm. so um, because it's not a bad thing to hear what somebody's ideas are mm -hmm. um, and at the same time it's um, it's not the feedback process we want mm -hmm. but it does help people feel heard, heard. and That's sometimes right. there are things that. that we might adjust yes yeah. Okay. yeah it's a tough line it is, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay and with that let us stop the recording at the meeting <laughs> Concluded. Adjourned. <laughs> Bye, Margaret. Bye, Margaret. See you soon. Oh, thank you.